During 2017, I struggled to no end with our swimming pool's water. After chucking in a full bag of chemicals for the umpteenth time, only to watch the dark green tint turn slightly lighter for a while, we started to consider converting it into an ecological pool. After the necessary research and planning, we started building on spring day of 2017. Welcome to the story of our green pool. The idea of an eco pool is to aim for a balance between the different forms of life in and around a swimming pool, rather than trying to kill off all life using chemicals. With the correct setup, your swimming pool's water can be surprisingly clean, and without the chemicals, the water is much healthier for you and your guests. The water is kept clean by a natural filtration process run by plants and microorganisms. The water needs to constantly circulate through the system to allow the plants and microorganisms in the filter area to consume the waste products and other nutrients that algae require to grow. If the filtering system grows fast enough, the concentration of the remaining nutrients is too low for the algae to flourish in the swimming pool. Of course, some algae will grow there, but it's manageable. It's interesting that the water itself is quite clear and that the algae grows on the floor and the walls of the swimming pool. The filtration area and swimming area can be integrated, but we wanted the filtration separated from the swimming area, so people could swim without being worried about dislodging plants or substrate. I also wanted the two areas separated so that the pool could be properly cleaned every year or so while the water kept circulating through the filtration area to prevent rotting caused by stationary, unaerated water. I did some online research and found a few companies that build eco pools, but they charged a considerable fee before even discussing their options, advice and even patents. I felt that my situation would not be well suited to pre-planned options and patents, since I had only a small space next to the swimming pool to work with. That area was my only option and I felt that I knew enough about the physics and chemistry of the process to design an effective system myself. It would be a lot more interesting in any event. It is usually advised to have a filtration area as large as the swimming sections area, although it can be a lot shallower. With my limited space, I only had about half of that available. But I thought if the plants were fairly densely populated and there was abundant living surface for bacteria and other microorganisms underwater, it would work. I transferred the physical dimensions into a SketchUp model and started playing around with areas and ideas in order to get an idea of how it would look dipping a toe in the water before jumping in. I could then also systematically go through each part of the design to try and ensure a nasty surprise doesn't rear its ugly head, possibly compromising the effective functioning of the system or causing a big headache to incorporate when the system has already been built. There are a few very important factors kind of behind the scenes that had to be specifically and effectively addressed for the system to function properly. I will expand on these as the episodes roll out. There was one problem with the space that needed to be converted into the filtration area. A beautiful large tree aloe that just could not be incorporated into the design. But we didn't want it to go to waste. I tracked down someone who was willing to remove the tree free of charge in exchange for the tree itself. They sell large trees, so hopefully the tree found a good home. Two of the aloe rosettes broke off during the move and we used them to establish a little succulent garden on the tennis club's premises, so part of the tree is still with us. We made a temporary hole through the wall on the tennis court side so we could work through it, else everything would have had to be carried through the yard from the opposite side. The foundation needed to be strong and solid to prevent movement and cracks in the system a few years down the line, so we played it safe. The main structure was built on the foundation with bricks, Speaking of building, I would not have been able to take on this project without the legendary Peter the Builder. We spent hours planning, adjusting, discussing pros and cons, and he ensured the building and fine detail went according to plan. In the next episode, we'll take a closer look at the different segments of the structure and their intended functionality. Please consider subscribing and turning on notifications to be reminded of new episodes.